Canoe slalom is a very technical sport, so we do a lot of technical work on the water. For canoe slalom, sports psychology is quite a big aspect, um, particularly uh, the visualisation aspect where obviously we don't get any practice runs or that beforehand. We train on the water and we try and kind of guess as many moves as are likely to come up to practice, but before you have your competition runs, you're straight into it. So we do a lot of visualisation to kind of prepare for that and to try and get the feeling that you're going to get from the water. Before they would start any run, they would generally visualise that a couple of times in their head. Visualising the run of the boat and what strokes they're putting in, in the positions they're putting in, try and get the feeling through their body of how the, the boat feels in the water. Trail the reverse back as you come into the gate, snap around and back onto the drive down. Coming out around the green, make sure we have plenty of space so we can really run it in deep into the back of the red. Drive so in deep against the, the wall. Course for Neil, my coach, nice and we'd set a plan. Really and after that plan was set, I go through, like it's almost memories in my head of what it felt like before and how I could make it better. Before I used to have to like think about it quite a lot and it wouldn't come to me very quickly, but now it's just from practice and looking at the courses time after time, it's just, it is, again, it's just natural now. Every athlete that's been here today training does a significant amount of sports psychology at some level. Generally, once you start getting the athletes at a young age to start visualising, you generally see a, a big increase in their, in their quality of training. And then obviously, when the quality of training steps up, the quality of performances generally moves along quite swiftly as well. I was at the Pan Celtic, which is a race between the four nations, uh, Scotland, England, Wales and Ireland, and um, I won the senior category. Visualisation is incredibly important. It's almost, um, you know, you, your mind really doesn't know the difference between doing the thing for real and imagining it um, in terms of body movement, etc. You'll see many athletes actually not only visualising what they're doing, but actually acting out the movements in terms of, of what they're doing in any particular sport, and particularly with canoe slalom. Eventually from that, what we developed was actually putting split times in the visualisation. That taught us quite a lot. And so I think it's very important to visualise it in real time. It didn't seem right to have slow visualisation and then fast visualisation. Um, the other thing that came from that is when you actually got an easy part of the course, you'll start to look for the easy time technically. So the intensity of visualisation and concentration for those easy parts of the course were still as intense as when it was difficult. For um, about 15 years now, researchers have conducted research in canoe slalom. We call it chess on water because athletes have to rehearse and plan their moves. This is because they don't get to paddle the actual gait sequence they go down until their race run. What is interesting then is the psychological strategies they have to invoke include imagery or visualization. So there's two key effects with imagery that we know from over 100 years of science on the subject. So one effect is called mental practice and that basically means by rehearsing a skill in your mind's eye using your different senses through imagery you enhance performance of that skill. And the second effect is something we've learned actually from the coaches. So this is what we call bottom-up knowledge. So coaches in Canoe Slalom, since about 1978, have been asking athletes to rehearse the course in real time and timing their imagined runs as well as their race runs. And they found a congruent relationship between the two. So this is called the mental travel effect. And the funny thing is, scientists didn't study it until about 1991. And we've studied since 1996, myself and Aidan Moran in Dublin, and we found out that the better level the athlete, the more accurate their visualisation in terms of time. And it also uh, has an expertise effect across other sport domains. So typically, athletes that are really expert are able to visualise, whether it be a gymnastics routine, whether it be motorsport or equestrian, or canoe slalom, they're able to visualise their actions in real time. We've conducted surveys uh, and interviews with athletes, and we've conducted lab-based studies. And in our lab-based studies, we found out correlations of up to 0.96, which is almost a perfect correlation for expert athletes between real and imagined time for their canoe slalom runs. And there's another interesting aspect about this. This is such a good measure of quality of imagery rather than the quality, that it can then be used to help other people visualize. For example, 
imagery is used in stroke rehabilitation. It's also used to help children who are recovering uh, from some motor disorders. As recent as 2011, there's a, been a research paper which proposed a new way to measure motor imagery, which is the kind of kinesthetic movements that are involved in remembering action sequences. And this paper proposed that people use mental travel or this imagery time measure to look at the quality of imagery across all different participants, whether it be people recovering from stroke, whether it be athletes. So the key point about imagery or visualization is that it can help those beyond sport.